Thank you, CGD. I'm a non-resident fellow here, so I feel part of it. And thank you very much, Liliana, for putting this together. It's amazing that we have such a good crowd because in DC it's always very hard. And actually, the three presentations that uh, preceded me are a great segue so, to my discussion. Do I have to do anything here? It will just pop up. Uh, because I'm going to talk about what to expect. I have the clicker. And when I click, what happens? All right. I think you have copies of the presentation. I'm going to talk about, I mean, right now what we heard is a little bit depressing because we heard that growth is slowing down and that the factors that are behind this are very hard to change. I guess there, there's one optimistic side to the story of Latin America in the last couple of decades is that at least we are not so prone to crisis and probably that's not going to happen again except with a few country exceptions that are doing things really bad. No? So that's a good news. And I'm going to be talking about another part that has been good news in the region and whether these good news will continue. Uh, so I'm not going to do it as technically as you guys did it, but you know the papers are there. And uh, if you have questions, I'm, I'm very happy to discuss them. Uh, so we have good news in the last uh, two decades in Latin America, and particularly in the 2000s. Economic growth and declining inequality led to two important changes in terms of the social makeup of the region. Poverty was reduced substantially, and also the middle class was expanded. So there's this graph that, uh, you know, by, by the way, I cite uh, the uh, sources. So if you want to use these graphs, you can cite them as well. And I can share the papers. They're not out yet. They're going to be published, but I, I'm, I'd be happy to share them. So you can see here that you know poverty, which was around 42% in the beginning of the, day, the 2000s, reached about 25%, and the middle class went from 22% to about 34%, right? So this is, and how do we define the middle class? I'm using the uh, definition that the World Bank has adopted between $10 PPP a day and $50 PPP a day, which has also been adopted by CGD because Nancy Birdsell came up with the $10 uh, threshold as well per day. No? Okay, so the big question is, was this due to growth or redistribution? Because both happened during the last decade. And we did some decomposition exercises. Well, first of all, we see that the decline in inequality, the redistribution, happened practically in all the countries. The ranking may change depending on the source you use, depending on which days you, uh, year you take as a starting year and the end year, but the graph always looks the same, la escalerita. No? So in terms of poverty, when you apply some typical standard decomposition exercises, you obtain that on average, it varies between countries, but on average, about 61% uh, of the decline in poverty is accounted for growth and about 39% by redistribution, the decline in inequality, which is a very large size <laughs> when you compare what, what ha used to happen before. In terms of the rise of the middle class, growth, the growth component, component which is the orange one here, was about 79%. And redistribution, the decline in inequality, 21%. Uh, so again, redistribution played a role, less than poverty reduction as expected, but it was there. So I guess you know we heard what uh, accounted for growth, and uh, so what accounted for the decline in inequality? And I think in the, uh, the story, as it goes now, there were three main forces in the direction of making inequality lower. One is the decline in inequality in labor markets associated to a decline in the skill premium, wages of people with higher skills versus people with lower skills were declining in relative terms. There were larger and more progressive transfers targeted to the poor. And there are also expansion of private transfers, particular remittances in some countries that played an important role. So some of the exercises that we've done quantitatively, this is what they look like. So labor income 
what happened to inequality in labor income is the bulk, the bulk of the story of why inequality declined. Government transit is the orange, private transit is the yellow. Okay, so now we are in more challenging times. And we heard from uh, the three speakers that preceded me that growth is not going to look good. Already we have uh, observed much lower growth. Augusto said that it, we're almost in zero. So we want to uh, ask the question, OK, so what will happen to poverty and the expansion of middle class will primarily be dependent on what happens to inequality because we know that growth is already going to do not much for it. So what do we expect from it? So I'm, I'm going to have a speculative exercise here in terms of what to expect, expect in terms of changes in income inequality. Will inequality increase, stay the same, or decline? And I'm just going to be able to share with you the forces that are in play. And in the end, the one that dominates is going to be the one that tells the story. So what are the forces in place? First, inequality, this is the average for the region. And it seems that it was petering out here at the bottom. But if you take Mexico out, it actually the decline continues throughout the year in which we have data. So there doesn't seem to be a slowdown up to 2012. But what can we expect uh, will happen with labor earnings, government transfers, and private transfers? So I think that in terms of labor earnings, we're going to have lower labor demand because of slower growth. And there's going to be a requirement, a need to introduce fiscal consolidation because of the uh, reasons that were explained before by, by Liliana, by Augusto, to some extent also by Santiago. So market-determined wages at the bottom, I think, are going to either grow more slowly, not at all, or even decline, depending on the country. On the other hand, because of fiscal consolidation, we would expect also the real minimum wages, which affect also what happens to the uh, spending of the government, because minimum wages affect their wage bill, also will not continue to rise, I would expect. Wages of the skilled workers also may fall, because without growth, the demand for them also will be lower. So in the end, the net effect will depend fall or grow more slowly. It will depend on which of the two forces dominates, what happens at the bottom or what happens at the top. In terms of government transfers, with most countries facing the uh, fiscal uh, constraints that are much tougher than before, uh, I think that transfers definitely will not continue to expand. And they will not, I mean, if they expand, they will not continue to be the equalizing force they were in the past. I think that some countries may even have to cut the general transfers. And also in other countries, it will be eroded directly by inflation, the ones like uh, we, we know where inflation is high. So that force also is going to be for sure in the negative in terms of what will be the impact on inequality. The only bright spot may be private transfers, because with the US recovery, we may see actually more demand for, for labor migrants and good wages for them, and remittances may continue to play an equalizing role in the countries where they're important, which is primarily in Central America, because they're important for Mexico, but not in relative terms. But in Central America and some Caribbean, they play a very important role. So I'm two, I have two minutes, and I have a thank you. So the bottom line, <laughs> I, I made it very short because I knew that it was going to be tough so in the bottom line is that the dynamics of inequality in the future are going to be key to know what happens to the uh, progress we saw in the past decade in terms of poverty reduction and the expansion of middle class. The dynamics of inequality will depend on what happens in labor market inequality. And that we cannot predict because it will depend on how the slower growth will affect wages at the bottom vis-a-vis -vis wages at the top. Ex ante, that will vary by country, maybe. And ex ante, we don't know what the outcome will be. Uh, we know that private transfers might be continue to play uh, an equalizing role. And we know that public transfer will be cut down 
or at least will not play the important role they played in the past in terms of uh, reductions in inequality and poverty. And that is it. Thank you. <laughs>